How's it going guys? My name is G. I'm an artist based out of Central Florida and in today's video I'm going to be actually showing you guys how I like to blend and paint with acrylic paints. And then on top of that we will be painting a coqui, Puerto Rican flag, and a domino in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month because I am Puerto Rican, my family's Puerto Rican, and I can't think of a better time than to embrace that culture and embrace that side of my family and myself other than now in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month. So that's going to be in today's video. Let's jump into it. All right. So this is my little desk as of right now. I like to use, whenever I'm going to be blending with paints, I like to use golden fluid acrylics. Um, just because I feel like they just have a nice consistency and really like I follow another artist that's on YouTube 1000 he always talked about them and This was when I first got into painting and he really recommended Golden fluid and I just loved it ever since for at least how I like to paint with my style with the blending Sometimes I will use heavy body acrylics um, not too much at times, but I do find myself using them at times as well, especially if I'm just low on the fluid acrylics, I will use these, or if I just don't have the color, or sometimes I will have to resort to it in certain situations where the paint isn't really reacting how I want it to, which it is rare, but it does happen at times. Now, the two things that I use is Golden's Retarder, and a satin glazing liquid, also from Golden. Now, this isn't a sponsorship from Golden, although I wish it was, and if they wanna sponsor me, I will be more than happy to take that sponsorship because I just love their products. Like, they're a great brand. Um, so yeah, I use a lot of the Golden stuff. You could still get away with water, like spray, uh, just a spray bottle and water to blend. You could do it that way. For me, I just like using the retarders just because, or satin glazing liquid, just because of the fact that it really slows the acrylic, the acrylic paint down for me. And I find it works very well. So now let's jump into the canvas. Okay, so at this point right now, I'm actually just applying some of the base layers. Just very simple, just trying to get at least a feel, an idea of how bright the colors are going to be, what colors particularly I'm going to be using, because as we all know, there's like 20 different blues that we could be using. So as of right now, I'm going to be using Titan Bluff for the white, at least for the white part of the Puerto Rican flag, I'm going to be using Titan Bluff, or Titan Buff, I'm sorry. And then the other thing that I'll be mixing in is titanium white. The reason why I'm gonna be using these two is just because I like the contrast and the look of that titanium buff. Um, but that titanium white, I really enjoy just because it gives it that really that extra pop of white and doesn't make it look too, um, I guess, khaki. Now at this point, I'm just using a very simple red, probably a pyro or pyro red. Excuse me, I am terrible at names with people and colors apparently. Um, <laughs> but I'm using that uh, red. Remind you, this is just going to be the first base layer. This isn't anything about blending yet. Um, and now you're going to see the finished product, which is right here with the colors, kind of how it looks like right now. All right, so it's been a little bit longer than expected since I've been painting. Um, been busy with just everything that's been going on right now. There's a lot of things moving forward and I'm super excited to share with you guys and make future YouTube videos or even just other YouTube videos for it. Um, but just know there's a lot of things in the works. It's really exciting. I'm really excited to share with you guys and later on on the updates. Um, and there will be some behind the scenes stuff, so I'm super excited about that. But now I'm going to finally get back into painting. There's a lot of things I want to do. I'm probably going to end up redoing this layer of red, blue, and like that white. Because my idea that I have envisioned is it being some concrete textured and then it kind of like being painted, that Puerto Rican flag being painted over that concrete texture. 
So we'll see. I'm going to try that at least. And if it doesn't work, then all right, I'll just have to repaint. But um, but yeah, pretty much the techniques that I'm showing you is kind of like standard, uh, like how I do it and how I work with. And just keep reapplying it. So let's jump back into painting. Sorry for the wait. Let's do it. All right, so the moment you all are waiting for, the blending part. So as of right now, I'm actually using the retarder right now. Um, and I'm going, actually I'm starting on the concrete look and feel. As of right now, I'm not too concerned with how the concrete is looking. I'm more concerned with just applying the colors um, to kind of like uh, still stand out a little bit and still pop out from uh, the blue but to still kind of give it that blue hue, that red hue, and that kind of like that Titan buff um, khaki look. So that's what I'm trying to go for right now because whenever I'm blending, I actually find it that it takes multiple layers. You're never really gonna just cover up one thing or really do anything um, in terms of blending in just one layer. It actually takes multiple layers that you're gonna be building up. And the reason why I use the retarder is because it actually gives me time to blend the paints together. Um, what I mean by that is it just gives me more time to actually uh, make that blend look more seamless and less of a huge transition. Now, at times I will use a blow dryer um, just because I find that when I'm working on a certain area, I'm kind of done and it's not really getting anywhere. I have to apply that blow dryer so that way the retarder dries and the paint dries and then I go back at that second layer of the retarder. Um, so then that way I can go back and just keep working. Okay, so as of right now, you're going to see me start to actually do a lot of different stuff and techniques right now. Um, right now, I'm looking at a reference photo that I found on the internet to kind of like get really like a more solid concrete look um, and just kind of like get that feel. So what I'm doing is I'm using, like I said, different varieties of black and white colors to get like different grays, lighter grays, darker grays, darker hues. Um, and then just going back and forth in certain areas. So as you can see here right now, I'm actually using two brushes as well. One brush is going to be strictly to put the paint down and then the other brush is going back in and um, actually blending it, smoothing those areas out and getting that kind of like that contrast in between without it being so like defined and like it looks more natural and more believable for me. So that's what I'm doing right now. And then that right here is what I'm doing is I'm actually uh, just taking my brush, the one I'm painting with, and just kind of like sprinkling a little bit of the white, the blacks in there to kind of give it more of that concrete look right now. Um, and then the, the cycle repeats. Right now I'm just dabbing my blending brush, the brush that I'm blending with. I'm just dabbing that back and forth, adding some different colors to kind of like make it look a little bit dirty applying the retarder again and then literally doing this step all over again for the entire process of the concrete um now there's gonna be times where i do blend with the brush that i'm blending with and i'll probably do like a circular motion um so then that way it kind of just stays in one area and it's not going anywhere that is one thing that i like to do a lot 
um, is just controlling my brush uh, so then that way when I'm blending it's not just blending everywhere it's contained it's in a smaller area and that's why I tackled paintings in by sections uh, because of for that reason I actually have more control and I feel a lot more comfortable doing it that way So at this point now I'm actually going to start doing the cracks which I'm really excited about and really um, just ecstatic about because I'm doing a voiceover. So when I was doing this I didn't know how it'll look. It's all just kind of like winging it, just kind of like going with the flow and I actually loved how the cracks turn out. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just using a, um, a flat a flat thin brush not a pointy one a flat thin brush for the cracks and just kind of like getting those uh getting those like fine dark lines i'm using a carbon black um that's also golden fluid I'm using that as well to get those fine uh thin cracks and then you'll see me use another brush which is just kind of like um a flat but it's a rounder brush um I'm sorry, I don't really know the names or numbers of these brushes. It's just what I could get. That's cheap. That's what I use. Um, but yes, I'm using it like another brush to kind of just like kind of blend a tad bit of that black, uh, of those black cracks in. Not too much because I still want those cracks to be um, very sharp and like to kind of like really stand out a little bit because I want it to look like cracks. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm just using carbon black, uh, very thinly going around, making some of those cracks thick to small to thin, um, different sizes, different shapes, and also uh, just adding some of the highlights in there as well uh, to kind of like make it feel like there's layers to those cracks as well. Okay, so now that I have the cracks done, taken care of, I'm really happy with how it looks. What I'm doing now is I'm just going over um, the Puerto Rican flag again with uh, just the colors that I was using originally in the very beginning of the video. But the only difference is I'm actually watering it down. Um, so I pretty much just get a little bit of water um, in the paint and then just water it down and then what you're seeing here is also me wiping the the excess of the red off so then that way it kind of like looks a little bit more like it's transparent it kind of you can still see the cracks you can still see the details that i put in and that was my biggest thing i didn't want to lose those details so that's why you see me kind of going in there and just um applying those colors but just wiping it down as well so that way I don't lose the details, it's translucent, it's transparent and you can still see all the details I've put into. So this is what I have right now. It's coming out really good, I'm really happy with it. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take sandpaper 
uh, one smooth grit and then a little bit more of a rougher grit. And I'm gonna pretty much do like a wax on and a wax off method, karate kid. <laughs> and I'm gonna do that um, just real quickly. And then as you can see here, kind of like um, I already started on the frog, but what that same paper did was it kind of like makes the background a little bit more rustic looking and it kind of gives it that uh, that dirty grit feeling, which is what I want. And now with the frog, it's the same process as before, just applying some base layers, not really blending yet, just adding one coat of just solid green. Um, so that way I have a good understanding of kind of the color that I want to go about it. All right, so now I'm gonna be working on the small details, which I'm really excited about to go into detail about how I do this part. <laughs> I just said detail and detail in the same sentence twice. Um, <laughs> so I'm really excited about it just because um, this process for me, I absolutely love the most. So for the skin, I'm gonna be using a variety of different colors. Um, for instance, blue, dark green, uh, yellow and green so I'm gonna be mixing yellow and green together and I'm also gonna be mixing white and green together and I'm also gonna be using pure white as well um, that's just for the skin of it of the green of the green uh, skin for the eyes I'm gonna be using a variety of different colors as well I'm gonna be using um, orange yellow a little bit of green a little bit of teal um, and then black and a dark blue for the pupils and of course white as well um, you're gonna see a lot of that come into play a little bit later on, but those are the colors that I'm using for the eyes. Now, this particular style of blending, um, I kind of got a huge inspiration from Greg Crayola Simpkins. If you don't know him, he is a phenomenal artist. I love the way he paints with acrylic paints, the way he blends. Like for me, like I hope and aspire to be just as good as him. Um, because man, he's amazing at, at that skill. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of like where I kind of got inspiration from. Now, right here, you're going to see me start um, applying the retarder again. And now I'm actually going to go more in depth on the eyes. So this is where like I start adding, like I said, those yellows, those blues, uh, the greens, going back to the oranges, adding a variety of colors. So in that way, like those eyes really do have like not just one layer of color or just like one little flat layer of color. It's gonna have a lot of layers of color. And of course, I'm using a smaller brush this time, not only to paint, but also to blend. Um, so as you see in my hand, I have two different brushes. Like I said, one is gonna be for painting, the other one is gonna be for the blending aspect of things or just smoothing those colors out. And I'm using a smaller brush this time. So yeah, like I said, it's just a matter of just adding layers of paint on, um, keeping the blending going, and then you're gonna get those eyes that I, I like to do and that I, I always like to create. And don't be afraid to mess up at times too. Don't be afraid to go over it. It's perfectly normal. I do it a lot where like I might make a mistake and then I have to go over it again. It is what it is. I learned from these processes. So now, as you can see here, I'm starting to add a little bit of the highlights to the skin. So that way it kind of like shows like the eye is actually a little bit more forward and not back because of course the eye, frog of the Koki's eye is forward, not protruding backwards. If it was protruding backwards, that'd be very weird. Um, so yeah, I'm adding those highlights and then also adding some of those shadows in uh, around uh, behind the highlights so that way it creates that depth um, so that way, it's, like I said, it's not just flat. It actually feels like there's depth to it. Like it's actually a head that's popping out um, and all that stuff. So this is where like I like to do a lot of um, even smaller, smaller details 
to the skin just by adding some highlights, changing some of the colors around, um, adding some shadows in certain areas, going around with around the eyes, adding that layer of black, so then that way the eyes are a little bit more popping out more. And I know some people might not like to use the colors. Um, like for instance, I know some people don't like to use pure black. For me, I don't have an issue with it um, for certain things. Uh, for things like this, I don't mind. Um, but if it's for fabric and clothing, uh, I try to avoid using just pure black um, just because I find that it creates that fabric and clothing a little bit too dense. Um, and if you look at my Spider-Man painting um, that I did, on here, I actually avoided using the color black for the majority of it. Now I'm, like I said, I'm just adding the highlights now. I'm creating that depth. I'm using um, a mixture of white and green and a little bit of teal for the highlights right now. So then that way, like it's giving that depth going around the nose and then of course blending it in. And then you're gonna see me later on add some white to really make those highlights stand out and pop. Okay, so now we kind of jumped a little bit forward with um, the rest of moving forward to the body, the rest of the body. Um, everything that you just kind of saw me do is the exact same process that I'm going about it with the rest of the green color body. Adding a little bit of yellow, adding a little bit of the darkness, some of the black, some of those blues. It's kind of like create that depth, those shadows. Um, and now I'm actually moving on to the under uh, part of the frog, which was really interesting for me to do um, just because like I haven't done it before. And then this is where I'm kind of ending up at right now with the painting. Um, sorry that I'm kind of jumping around a little bit. It's just this video could easily be over two hours <laughs> and I'm trying to keep it under 30 minutes uh, for this part just because like I said, there's a lot of painting that I'm doing and it's very, um, at times it's, it's very tedious because you're just kind of doing the exact same motion, but also at times it's very, um, just time consuming as well. Like I said, this painting literally took me easily over 24 to 28 hours easily. Um, so with that being said, same thing, I'm applying the retarder on um, just to kind of like get that blending going so then that way it buys me extra time. And at this point as well, I'm also considering how do I want to do my domino um, at this point. So like as you can see me, I'm starting to already kind of like just add a little bit of shading into my domino and just adding some colors. I'm using again, Titan, uh, Titan buff or titan buff whichever one <laughs> i'm using that color for the domino i mixed a little bit of brown and a hint of black for the for the shadowy parts of the domino and yeah that's all i'm doing right now adding yellow to the to the green frog skin 
Um, so that way it kind of like pops out a little bit more, has a little bit more depth of color versus just being flat. And if you guys are interested in actually a full, full in-depth breakdown where I break down the brushes that I'm using, um, how I'm blending in particular, like how I, uh, like the brush strokes, like if I'm going in a circular pattern or anything like that, let me know in the comments below. I would love to do a full, more in-depth video on this tutorial on how I do this. Um, and if I do, it'll probably be a lot longer. It'll probably be maybe close to an hour, maybe 45 minutes, maybe 50 minutes. And yeah, let me know in the comment section below. I would love your guys' feedback and to hear what your guys' thoughts on an in-depth, full breakdown of how I do this stuff. Now, before I show you the final reveal, I actually have this old photo of me when I was in elementary school, probably like kindergarten, first grade, something like that, where I got an award uh, for first place for designing a shirt um, with Puerto Rico on it, which is actually very funny. So what you're seeing me do is actually going to be recreating that photo. I'm drawing myself an award right now, as you can see. And yeah, you're gonna see the final reveal, of course, which is gonna happen in five, four, three, two, and one. Let's go to the final reveal. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please give it a like, subscribe, comment, and also don't forget to ring that notification bell guys so that way you know when I drop the next video. Lastly, if you want this as a print guys, it is now available on my Etsy store. You can find it in the link below. And we are just in time for the holiday season guys. We have bundles and baskets of gifts for you guys. So that way you give it to your loved one. We have a huge sale going on right now in our Etsy store. You can find all that in the link description you will see that down below. And without anything else, guys, I just want to say thank you for all the support and the love that you guys give me. I appreciate it. Love you guys, and I'll see you on the next video.